So uh, what, I thought we would, what I thought we would make today is uh, something that will make you all money. Uh, rather than just uh, pulling your ice cream, putting it into buckets and stick it in the freezer, I went to uh, Walmart and I bought these pie shells. Mm. They're pre-made pie shells. And they come in graham cracker or Oreo cookie pie shells. And these are... 99 cents each in Walmart. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some Bailey's ice cream and then make ice cream pies. And the way they do this, it comes like this. You undo the tin foil and then when uh, I pull out this, I take the paper off. And then when they're ready, after you do that, you put the cover on, crimp them, and put them in the freezer. And uh, you can sell them all day long at 10 bucks a pie. Uh, you can even take orders for flavors because what the heck, you're making the ice cream anyway. So it's a cool thing. Have you done this before? Have I done it before? In the, in the second part. You don't think I would come out here and make a fool of myself. Okay, so Why not? I do. <laughs> How much ice cream goes in there is really the basis. I guess you'll see. <laughs> right? No, so just pay attention. I don't know how much goes in. That much. That much. So the first thing you want to do, which I learned in the store, is, I know, only I get away with it, is to prepare these. Because otherwise, your ice cream's ready, and then you start, you have to worry about this. So I learned to prepare these. What? No. No, I no. made that mistake. I no, did. No, no, I'm at the pie shell. I yeah. I, no. I made that mistake. You take these pie shells and throw them in the freezer. Yeah. Great idea. Get them pre chilled. Right. No. No. They break up. They crumble. They break into little pieces. Use them at room temperature. All right. All right. And then freeze them. The labels come, their labels come right mm -hmm. off. And then there's a little sticky here, which you can leave for your customer or you can peel it off. It's okay by me either way. Whoop. The ice cream that, what are you doing? I'm sanitizing. Man, I like having you around. Just right, here right. to help out. Plus I'm gonna get one of those things, right? Poor basket, yes sir. What do they call a poor basket? Oh, poor basket. Not P-O-O-R. No. no, no, not poor. Just the other homonym of it. The other homonym, huh? Mm -hmm. They sent somebody smart over here. Okay, you know what? Do a couple of those. All right. Hey. I'm on it. I'm on it. Yes. There are none. There is. We do not manufacture it. We're going to make that later today, a non dairy. But we have, we have somebody for you to talk to. The bladder back in the freezer? It's right here. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to be using a, an Emery 12 quart. Uh, which is, in my world, half of uh, the batch, because I use a 24 quart. I use a two-week-old 24 quart machine. I'm the proud owner of the new one. The latest and greatest. The latest and the greatest. Because I work here, Steve was nice enough to give me, at no charge, a brand new machine. Yeah. When cakes fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you keep your old equipment to accommodate volume? He sold it off at a profit. Shame on him. What's that? No, I wonder if you were going to use two machines. No, you know, you always think about when I started, I started with the six quart machine, and when I graduated to the larger machine, I thought, well, I'll keep that for backup. It, it just collected dust for six months because there, there was no need for backup. And as far as small batches, I have to disagree with Steve a little bit. In my 24 quart, I can make a very small batch. I, it may not be in the manual, but um, I do it. No comment? <laughs> no. 
All right. Still, the, did you take the water out of here? Freezing. Yes, I did. I'm still reeling from freezing out my machine. I don't worry about it. So uh, we're going to make, uh, for the ice cream pies, we'll make Bailey's ice cream pies. Whoa. It sounds delicious. <laughs> This is 12. That's why I'm using a half bath. The 24 is the exact same physical size, except the barrel on the 24 is twice as deep. This is a 12. I have a 24. I normally would add 10 quarts of mix, which is one bladder. That's my measurement. One bladder is a, is a batch for me. So here I had to measure out half of that. When you... It's the best way to describe it is if you take a bowl and put heavy cream in and stir it with a whisk, right. it's going to remain heavy cream. If you take an electric mixer and put it in there, it'll become whipped cream. So no, it's not just the air in the bowl, it's just the ambient air around that the whipping action is expanding it out. So the faster we spin this, the more air you'll get. Air is not a bad thing. Uh, my father got called down to a Senate subcommittee one year because uh, Senator Foghorn Leghorn was uh, saying something about them dairy people, they're cheating the public, they're putting air in the ice cream. And Dad That's had to go down easy. and explain, well, without air, it would taste like lard. You know, and we don't want to sell lard. Uh, so air is a very important component. Who's that? Foghorn Leghorn? I think you either that or Arkansas. Yeah, it was actually a uh, Foghorn Leghorn was a um, uh, Daffy Duck uh, character, but there, it was based on a senator. I'm yes. working here, guys. I'm sorry, we're telling jokes. That's, can I see that vanilla? That is a new vanilla from Lockhead. That's a uh, natural vanilla. Eight hundred dollars a gallon? No, the pure vanilla is five hundred dollars a gallon. Where's right that? Yeah. I want to use that. I hid it away because you use so much of it. And this is a new one for us to try. It's called a natural vanilla, and I think you'll what, like it. What does it mean? It means it's good. It came no, from Lockhead. Natural? Yeah, it's an FDA term. Okay. Uh, how many uh, quarts of mix did we put in? Ten. Well, not, not ten. How many? Five. Five. Correct. So we'll add five ounces of uh, vanilla, okay? Natural vanilla. You want to? You don't want to measure? No. Nah. He doesn't pay for this. How much is that vanilla? About a hundred dollars a gallon. And all vanilla costs will be going down uh, in future years. Yeah. Yeah. It, let's it, it let's has hope. happened in the past, just like it did with coffee. Uh, the market drops off and the foreign countries that are supplying it realize the demand has gone down and they drop it down to where it should be. All right, and we'll add uh, a bottle of this stuff. <laughs> Wow, look at that. What? Hey, the whole bottle? The whole bottle. How much do you use in your bigger machine? I use two in my machine. Okay. That's... Uh, it's uh, distilled it's water Irish and cream. Distilled water and other ingredients. <laughs> right? What? Distilled water and other ingredients. It's Bailey's. <laughs> And you're hiding the evidence. Yes, we're throwing it away. All right, uh, that's it. Simple. Uh, and according to Rob, we don't even have to add extra vanilla, right? Because this is 10%, it has your vanilla in it. You don't need to, but it's, right. it's up but to the I user. But I do, I always do. And I use 10% at my store all the time. And now we'll put the refrigeration on. You hear the compressor go on? <laughs> my mic working? Yeah, it's working. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, great. And what we'll do is we'll line up the pies. 
Jeff doesn't use a timer. But yes, you should. How long you, would you think you would run that? Uh, that alcohol in there? Well, probably uh, half a batch, probably. No, it's, it's not half a batch. It's well, I, all right, 12 minutes. Yeah. See, alcohol. The, the more sugar in the, in the mix, the longer it's going to take. And sugar is in the form of sugar, honey, alcohol. Alcohol is the longest. That's going to take the longest. Honey is the next longest. And then sugar. Uh, brown sugar falls somewhere between the two. Uh, but it really doesn't matter. I'm not aware of any other machines on the market that could take that level of alcohol. Maybe a couple ounces, but not a whole bottle. Uh, because you need a lot of refrigeration. The uh, alcohol is never going to freeze. It freezes at, I think, minus 234, give or take, Fahrenheit. So it'll never freeze in the ice cream. It's only going to be in suspension. So uh, the fact that you could even put it in the machine and get a product to come out is, is pretty amazing. Uh, but these have so much refrigeration power that they will. The question is, are there state rules about alcohol? And yes, every state is different. Surprisingly, my state, where I'm from, happily from, New York, uh, they have some of the most liberal rules. Um, I heard a story, I thought it was associated with Jeff, but uh, I think he's <laughs> denying it, uh, that the state of Florida, I wasn't going to say their name, the state of Florida came up with a ruling that if you put alcohol in ice cream and serve it in a dish, that's, that's fine. But if you take that vanilla ice cream and put it into it with the alcohol and put it into a blender and hand it to someone as a milkshake, that's a mixed drink, and you can't do that. So that's how convoluted the law can be. A lot of people use alcohol extracts, definitely not the same. Vanilla uh, has alcohol. Vanilla has a strong amount of alcohol in it. That's how vanilla is made. Um, you can, uh, like with wines, you can boil off the alcohol, uh, but it's not the same. It's kind of fun to, you know, for private parties and a group like this to make ice cream uh, that's got, you know, a healthy shot of alcohol in it. Why don't we just take a hammer to the machine? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't hurt it. <laughs> no, it couldn't hurt it. Uh, that is a problem. Come on, baby. You can do it. Yay. Put this somewhere. Wow. It's a good idea to, uh, uh, to just stick a spoon uh, in the top and just taste it halfway through. You still have plenty of time to make changes. Not sweet enough, too sweet. What do we do if it's too sweet? If it's not sweet enough, we'll add sweetener of some kind. What do we do if it's too sweet? Add more mix. How do you like that? Good. Yes, sir. Oh, Jeff's pulling pies, so if you all can watch. <laughs> Jeff's pulling pies. Can you, can you see this up here? We'll get to you in a minute. Jack, can you zoom in on this? Yes, sir. And Jack, you want some of this coffee ice cream with chocolate chips in it? I'm all set for now. Okay. Okay. We'll get to that too. Yeah. What I like about this, uh, selling the pies, uh, Jeff can tell you that you get a very good price for them. Uh, but what I like about it is human nature. You bring home a pie like this and you take a slice uh, as soon as you bring it home. 
you uh, pull it out after dinner and you have a little bigger slice. And then if you're like me, 11 o'clock at night, you uh, grab a knife and you pull out just a little tiny half inch slice just before you go to bed. So you don't feel like you're eating a whole lot of ice cream and pie. You're, you're, I only had a little slice just before bed, you know, no big deal. And so the customer really gets a lot of value out of this, uh, more so than say a pint of ice cream because a pint goes so quickly. This will hang around in the freezer for a couple of days. Oh, so look at you the, making the, those. So it's all about how the customer feels. Did I get my money's worth? There's and a question in the back. Totally with, there was yeah, just, I was just wondering, um, just based on the machine freezing up, um, have you thought about on the screen having a timer built in? Um, I, the only machine that has a timer in all my machines is this. Uh, and it's just, it's mainly there to turn on the refrigeration. The reason Timer's I don't... Timer's too inconsistent. You, you never know how long a batch is going to take. That's right. The reason I don't do timers is every flavor is different depending on the sugar content. Vanilla might be uh, six or seven minutes. Um, a I'm, not saying, I'm not saying like a shutdown timer. No, I'm talking, about any, I'm talking about any kind of timer. We don't do timers because uh, every flavor is different. So if you say, I'm gonna set it for nine minutes, your vanilla is gonna freeze up, your maple walnut won't be ready. Uh, the best way to make ice cream is, I have a friend up in New England, he has a sign over his door, says, we love you, we think you're great, I'm making ice cream, go away. And, and that's the gist of it. You can't be talking to people like this. You can't be on the phone. I tell people, go out and buy a cheap kitchen timer like this, cost six bucks, and so when this breaks, which it will, I just throw it away and buy another one. If it was built into the machine, Capigiani and other people do that. They build them into the machine. Now it's a $235 timer with a $200 repair call. And while you're waiting for the repair call, your machine is down and out. It doesn't run. If this breaks, it doesn't take down the machine. So the real way to make ice cream is if it's going to take, say, eight minutes, set it for five. Put it right there. Now I am getting ready for the next batch. I'm rinsing out my tubs. I'm getting my flavors ready. The bell goes off. Ah, I got two minutes to get back to the machine. I, I'm happy I froze it up. Uh, I, I can take a negative and turn it into a positive. I'm glad I froze it up because now you just saw what not to do. What happens when you get so distracted? When I have people calling me up on the phone and they say, I'm in the middle of a, a batch of uh, butterscotch swirl, and hold on a second, Steve, there's a customer and they're serving the customer and then they're talking to me. Uh, I know they're gonna freeze it up. Your, your job for the next two or three hours is to make ice cream. It's not to do anything else. You tell your staff, uh, don't come in, don't bother me, I'm making ice cream. So you really did see a good real world situation uh, of what can go wrong. Now look at these, look at how beautiful that is. And the other thing about ice cream is the flavor is enhanced after it's frozen. This will taste delicious now, but give it six or eight hours and the flavor will be that a little bit stronger. Um, I've had people say, oh, that was a great vanilla, Steve, but it could have used more coming fresh out of the machine. Then they taste it a few hours later and boom, the flavor has popped. Italian ice doesn't do that. What you taste is what you get. Uh, but the uh, ice creams uh, definitely uh, are enhanced. We gotta clear this stuff off for the moment so we can get the ice cream in there. So these are ice cream pies, sell them for 10 bucks all, all day long. And some, if you have a, a place that seats people, a store that seats people, let them buy a pie for the table and, and enjoy themselves or whatever. Do you open that for me? And if you want to try this, I, I have some more without the pie. So you can come up and have that. You better come up and have that. Can I have just a spoon? No, I don't want that. Just a spoon. Hey, Jeff, guess what was on TV the other night, I'm last like, Sunday night? Like Steve. You're nothing like Steve. <laughs> <laughs> An hour from here. Hey, hey, An Jeff? hour from here, Fruitwood Park. 
Jeff, last Sunday night, there was a new Sharknado movie on. I saw it, Sharknado 5. Yes, and I, I was talking to a customer on the email, and I said, I'm sorry, I gotta go, Sharknado's on. And uh, he writes back because he'd seen my video about my Sharknado Italian ice. He said, are you gonna thro throw frozen candy corn at the shark? I made this great formula for a blood red Italian ice. Well, you said great used, formula. Uh, well, I thought it was a great formula. <laughs> with little pieces of candy corn in, which are triangle shaped, for the shark's teeth. The only, it sounds good. It was great. The candy corn freezes up like a rocket. It'll, it'll bust your teeth. I'm lucky I didn't get sued for dental bills. Good <laughs> Bob some. Thank you. Oh, you're waiting here. Really? A lot of people wait all day for my ice cream. <laughs> Kim. Hello. Now we didn't make this uh, yesterday, even though it's uh, the number, well, the number two seller in my store. We already had it. Yes, that's right. You tasted it. Sorry, it's all you get. It's all you get. It's all you ask for. A spoonful. I like tasting it. I had to come back. Want some, Rob? Yes, please.